Chapters sixteen and seventeen of Ward Number Six by Anton Chekhov, translated by Constance Garnett, eighteen sixty one to nineteen forty six. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Chapter sixteen. One day Mikhail Averyanitch came after dinner when Andrey Yefimitch was lying on the sofa. It so happened that Hobotov arrived at the same time with his bromide andrey yefimitch got up heavily and sat down leaning both arms on the sofa you have a much better colour to-day than you had yesterday my dear man began mikhail Averyanitch. yes you look jolly upon my soul you do it's high time you were well dear colleague said hobotov yawning i'll be bound you are sick of this bobbery and we shall recover said mikhail Averyanitch cheerfully we shall live another hundred years to be sure not a hundred years but another twenty hobotov said reassuringly it's all right all right colleague don't lose heart don't go piling it on we'll show what we can do laughed mikhail avianitch and he slapped his friend on the knee we'll show them yet next summer please god we shall be off to the caucasus and we will ride all over it on horseback trot 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 and when we are back from the caucasus i shouldn't wonder if we will all dance at the wedding mikhail avianitch gave a sly wink we'll marry you my dear boy we'll marry you andrey yefimitch felt suddenly that the rising disgust had mounted to his throat his heart began beating violently that's vulgar he said getting up quickly and walking away to the window don't you understand that you are talking vulgar nonsense he meant to go on softly and politely but against his will he suddenly clenched his fists and raised them above his head leave me alone he shouted in a voice unlike his own blushing crimson and shaking all over go away both of you mikhail Averyanitch and hobotov got up and stared at him first with amazement and then with alarm go away both andrey yefimitch went on shouting stupid people foolish people i don't want either your friendship or your medicine stupid man vulgar nasty hobotov and mikhail Averyanitch, looking at each other in bewilderment staggered to the door and went out andrey yefimitch snatched up the bottle of bromide and flung it after them the bottle broke with a crash on the door-frame go to the devil he shouted in a tearful voice running out into the passage to the devil when his guests were gone andrey yefimitch lay down on the sofa trembling as though in a fever and went on for a long while repeating stupid people foolish people when he was calmer what occurred to him first of all was the thought that poor mikhail Averyanitch must be feeling fearfully ashamed and depressed now and that it was all dreadful nothing like this had ever happened to him before where was his intelligence and his tact where was his comprehension of things and his philosophical indifference the doctor could not sleep all night for shame and vexation with himself and at ten o'clock next morning he went to the post office and apologized to the postmaster we won't think of what has happened mikhail Averyanitch, greatly touched said with a sigh warmly pressing his hand let bygones be bygones libavkin he suddenly shouted so loud that all the postmen and other persons present started hand a chair and you wait he shouted to a peasant woman who was stretching out a registered letter to him through the grating don't you see that i am busy we will not remember the past he went on affectionately addressing andrey yefimitch sit down i beg you my dear fellow for a minute he stroked his knees in silence and then said i have never had a thought of taking offence illness is no joke i understand your attack frightened the doctor and me yesterday and we had a long talk about you afterwards my dear friend why won't you treat your illness seriously you can't go on like this excuse me speaking openly as a friend whispered mikhail Averyanitch. you live in the most unfavourable surroundings in a crowd in uncleanness no one to look after you no money for proper treatment my dear friend the doctor and i implore you with all our hearts listen to our advice go into the hospital there you will have wholesome food and attendance and treatment though between ourselves yevgeny fyodoritch is mauvais ton yet he does understand his work you can fully rely upon him he has promised me he will look after you andrey yefimitch was touched by the postmaster's genuine sympathy and the tears which suddenly glittered on his cheeks my honoured friend don't believe it he whispered laying his hand on his heart don't believe them it's all a sham my illness is only that in twenty years i have only found one intelligent man in the whole town and he is mad 
i am not ill at all it's simply that i have got into an enchanted circle which there is no getting out of i don't care i am ready for anything go into the hospital my dear fellow i don't care if it were into the pit give me your word my dear man that you will obey yevgeny fyodoritch in everything certainly i will give you my word but i repeat my honoured friend i have got into an enchanted circle now everything even the genuine sympathy of my friends leads to the same thing to my ruin i am going to my ruin and i have the manliness to recognize it my dear fellow you will recover what's the use of saying that said andrey yefimitch with irritation there are few men who at the end of their lives do not experience what i am experiencing now when you are told that you have something such as diseased kidneys or enlarged heart and you begin being treated for it or are told you are mad or a criminal that is in fact when people suddenly turn their attention to you you may be sure you have got into an enchanted circle from which you will not escape you will try to escape and make things worse you had better give in for no human efforts can save you so it seems to me meanwhile the public was crowding at the grating that he might not be in their way andrey yefimitch got up and began to take leave mikhail avryanitch made him promise on his honour once more and escorted him to the outer door towards evening on the same day hobotov in his sheepskin and his high top boots suddenly made his appearance and said to andrey yefimitch in a tone as though nothing had happened the day before i have come on business colleague i have come to ask you whether you would not join me in a consultation eh thinking that hobotov wanted to distract his mind with an outing or perhaps really to enable him to earn something andrey yefimitch put on his coat and hat and went out with him into the street he was glad of the opportunity to smooth over his fault of the previous day and to be reconciled and in his heart thanked hobotov who did not even allude to yesterday's scene and was evidently sparing him one would never have expected such delicacy from this uncultured man where is your invalid asked andrey yefimitch in the hospital i have long wanted to show him to you a very interesting case they went into the hospital yard and going round the main building turned towards the lodge where the mental cases were kept and all this for some reason in silence when they went into the lodge nikita as usual jumped up and stood at attention one of the patients here has a lung complication hobotov said in an undertone going into the yard with andrey yefimitch you wait here i'll be back directly i am going for a stethoscope and he went away chapter seventeen it was getting dusk ivan dmitritch was lying on his bed with his face thrust into his pillow the paralytic was sitting motionless crying quietly and moving his lips the fat peasant and the former sorter were asleep it was quiet andrey yefimitch sat down on ivan dmitritch's bed and waited but half an hour passed and instead of hobotov nikita came into the ward with a dressing-gown some under-linen and a pair of slippers and a heap on his arm please change your things your honour he said softly here is your bed come this way he added pointing to an empty bedstead which had obviously recently been brought into the ward it's all right please god you will recover andrey yefimitch understood it all without saying a word he crossed to the bed to which nikita pointed and sat down seeing that nikita was standing waiting he undressed entirely and he felt ashamed then he put on the hospital clothes the drawers were very short the shirt was long and the dressing-gown smelt of smoked fish please god you will recover repeated nikita and he gathered up andrey yefimitch's clothes into his arms went out and shut the door after him no matter thought andrey yefimitch wrapping himself in his dressing-gown in a shamefaced way and feeling that he looked like a convict in his new costume it's no matter it does not matter whether it's a dress-coat or a uniform or this dressing-gown but how about his watch and the notebook that was in the side pocket and his cigarettes where had nikita taken his clothes now perhaps to the day of his death he would not put on trousers a waistcoat and high boots it was all somehow strange and even incomprehensible at first andrey yefimitch was even now convinced that there was no difference between his landlady's house and ward number six that everything in this world was nonsense and vanity of vanities and yet his hands were trembling his feet were cold and he was filled with dread at the thought that soon ivan dmitritch would get up and see that he was in a dressing-gown he got up and walked across the room and sat down again 
here he had been sitting already half an hour an hour and he was miserably sick of it was it really possible to live here a day a week and even years like these people why he had been sitting here had walked about and sat down again he could get up and look out of window and walk from corner to corner again and then what sit so all the time like a post and think no that was scarcely possible andrey yefimitch lay down but at once got up wiped the cold sweat from his brow with his sleeve and felt that his whole face smelt of smoked fish he walked about again it's some misunderstanding he said turning out the palms of his hands in perplexity it must be cleared up there is a misunderstanding meanwhile ivan dmitritch woke up he sat up and propped his cheeks on his fists he spat then he glanced lazily at the doctor and apparently for the first minute did not understand but soon his sleepy face grew malicious and mocking aha so they have put you in here too old fellow he said in a voice husky from sleepiness screwing up one eye very glad to see you you suck the blood of others and now they will suck yours excellent it's a misunderstanding andrey yefimitch brought out frightened by ivan dmitritch's words he shrugged his shoulders and repeated it's some misunderstanding ivan dmitritch spat again and lay down cursed life he grumbled and what's bitter and insulting this life will not end in compensation for our sufferings it will not end with apotheosis as it would in an opera but with death peasants will come and drag one's dead body by the arms and the legs to the cellar ah well it does not matter we shall have our good time in the other world i shall come here as a ghost from the other world and frighten these reptiles i'll turn their hair grey moiseka returned and seeing the doctor held out his hand give me one little kopeck he said end of chapter seventeen recording by expatriate in bangor maine